Hiya. How are you doing, ladies? Just wanted to come on to, to have a chat with you about um, some weight issues, some fat um, that you might be having trouble budging around your around your waist or on your body um, during menopause, perimenopause. Um, I've had a lot of women talking to me about it, wanting some requests um, to answer some questions as to what's happening. Why can't you budge that fat? Why are you having so much trouble losing weight? Uh, or even building muscle. Are you having a lot of problems building muscle? So I'm Andrea, if you're new to my, watching my videos. Um, I like to help women in with midlife challenges uh, so they can have less anxiety and depression, hot flashes, have more energy, um, have more of a balanced life, uh, be more self-aware, have more self-care, um, so they can look good and feel good inside and out. And today, yeah, I'm focusing on um, why can't you budge that fat around your body uh, and lose weight and build muscle? So let's take a look what's happening as your hormones decline. Because you're getting a different body now in, in perimenopause. You're getting ready um, to stop your period, stop being fertile, stop having babies. And it's, a ne it's the next phase of your life before you leave this life. Um, and it can be a massive, massive um, wake-up call for a lot of women. can bring them on a lot of... Um, were some fears about the life, um, things that are not happy in the life. You can actually be more confident at this time as well. Um, but it's it's probably one of the problematic um, issues that I'm seeing with a lot of women that they can't lose weight, they're having trouble, they're not happy with the, the way that they look anymore, and they look in the mirror. Um, and they want to they want to go into midlife and still look good and not be stick thin. I'm not saying that you'd have to be stick thin to be good, look good and feel sexy, because you don't. You know, just be happy with the way that you look, um, and you don't have to keep jumping on the scales every two minutes to weigh yourself to to look good about and feel good about yourself. And it's all about your own self image, how you view yourself, how you want to look in in, in your own skin, basically. Um, we're all different shapes and sizes and, and our health is more important at the end of the day than being stick thin because some thin people can be unhealthy as well. Uh, so what's happening in your body as your hormones declining? Well, your estrogen and progesterone and testosterone are, are getting lower um, and this is a gradual process and it can put a bit of stress on your body as you're going through this, this phase of your life and your body can get quite a bit stressed out. Um, you're losing your muscle mass, you lose a bit of bone. Don't lose massive amounts of bone, but you do lose a little bit of bone. Um, you're more sensitive to stress and sugar around this time. This is why there's a lot of anxiety and depression coming up and a lot of mood swings because of that sensitivity to stress and sugar. And you can suddenly find yourself crying for no reason when you, um, you, you, you're not usually like that. It can be more emotional. Um, so because of this, um, you have to be really particular about keeping your body nourished. So no deprivation, no restriction, restrictive diets. Um, you want to keep your body nourished. And um, so it's, it can cope with a stressful time really efficiently. The biggest thing that can sabotage your weight loss is stress. Um, and I talk about stress a lot in my videos because it is a massive, massive game changer when it comes to weight loss and fat, because your body just wants to hold on to that fat even more. The more stress that you have in your body, the more your body will, will feel really, um, what's the word, unsettled and just not happy and want to hold on to your fat even more, because it's putting yourself in danger mode. Your body thinks that you're in danger. It needs to, it needs to hold on to your fat to protect you. Um, so that's what's happening if you have too, too much stress in your life. And you can have, Mind stress, diet stress, lifestyle stress, and exercise, all these four things. It's not just stress in your life like, oh, I don't like my job, or I work too many hours. Um, there's also, there's lots of lifestyle stresses that sometimes you can't, um, you don't know what's going to happen because like, like you lose a loved one. 
uh, you get divorced, you've got a big upheaval in your life, you lose your job, you move house. Those are all big stresses, lifestyle stresses. But you can do so much to help with those stresses, to keep your body nourished, to help your body, to cope with that stress. So those are the lifestyle stresses that you can't plan for. Your diet stress is, you know, are you eating the wrong types of foods, especially the wrong types of foods for you. You know, every, every person's different. And if you're eating something that your body doesn't like or you can't digest it properly, something like that, that can put stress on your body. That can increase your inflammation in your body as well. And that's a stressor on your body, the inflammation. Um, and then there's exercise stress. Are you doing too much exercise? Are you, are you not doing the right type of exercise for you right now? Um, and then there's mind stress. You know, you're putting yourself down. You're saying negative things about yourself. You, you've been negative against uh, with other people, negative about things in your, happening in your life. This can all drag your body down, put stress on your body as well. So there's all types of different stresses. So we need to look at that to help put that inflammation out, to help keep your body balanced. Because the more stress that you have in your life, the more your body's stressed out, the more your hormones are going to just plummet and they're not going to be made properly. Because when your body's under stress, it's in stress mode. It's concentrating on saving your life. So you're not digesting your foods properly at this time when you're stressed out. You're not making your hormones either. Um, your progesterone is being stolen to make cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. So you're not, you, your progesterone is going to plummet even more. And it goes low anyway in, in naturally in menopause, but it's supposed to go low slowly, not just plummet because of stress. And then that can put estrogen high. Um, uh, and that's not going to be good in the body, having an imbalance like that of progesterone really low. And your estrogen can go low as well. And your progesterone can go very low. But you're still out of balance with progesterone and estrogen. Um, but this changes in your cycle during, during the month. You know, you have estrogen first two weeks of your month. And then the second two weeks you have progesterone. So then you're not going to have a lot much, much of a, a balance going on and an ebb and flow of your hormone cycle. So that's going to put more stress on your body. And then you put stress on your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands are going to say, hang on a minute, what's going on? I've got extra work to do with you. Um, I'm not liking this at all, all this extra work I've got to do. Controlling this cortisol. Um, and then it's going to affect your blood sugar levels. It's going to affect your sodium potassium balancing. Um, and this is important for your cells to get, your waste, get things in and out of your cells. It's going to affect your magnesium levels as well, your magnesium and your zinc levels. So your minerals are going to get out of balance. Um, your thyroid is going to start playing up. Your thyroid is not going to be happy as well because your thyroid and your drill glands are best buddies. They're really good friends. They're going to talk to each other. They're going to say, um, thyroid, I, I could do with you healthy. You're my best mate. I need some help. And the thyroid's going, yeah, mate, I've got problems as well. You know, I'm working overtime. I can't work properly. You, so your thyroid's working overtime, and your thyroid can't get, get to work. Because all of a sudden, estrogen's going up. Because of your stress levels, your estrogen levels can go up. And then, because you're holding on to fat more, your fat can make estrogen as well. So then, that's why your estrogen levels can go really high above progesterone. This is when it can start going pro a problem. Because your estrogen levels will steal all the cars, or the carriers. It's called the thyroid, it's thyroid binding globulin. Um, and it can, estrogen can bind up when, and steal all the cars. So the thyroid is, is there waiting to work. It's wanting to get to work, but it can't get to work because estrogen is stealing all the cars. So it can't get to work. So, and then it's going to put stress on your digestive system. Your stomach acid can, can go low. Then you're having lots of digestive problems. You're getting bloating, acid reflux. You're not feeling great. So you're not getting all the nutrients you need for you, from your food. So your body's getting depleted because it's not happy. It's, it's putting more stress on your body. Um, you may be drinking too much alcohol. You're not getting enough sleep, which is stressful on your body. So you can see how all this adds up. And so your body's not going to say, fat burn is not happening. I'm not losing any weight. No way. There's too much going on here. I can't concentrate. I'm too, like, stressed out. Your body is not getting all the nutrients it needs. Fire isn't working right. You drill the glands of the fire, at the, at the spark plug. It's that, the match. And then your thyroid is your fire. The thyroid burns your metabolism, keeps your metabolism burning and on fire. So if, if your thyroid can't work right, you're not going to be burning fat because it can't 
get to work. Can't get your metabolism going. And then if you've got gut, if you've got sluggish gut, because your gut's not working right, you're getting constipated, then your liver's going to get sluggish, your liver's going to get detoxed, um, your liver's going to get congested, sorry. You know, there's like this traffic jamming going on in your liver, and that's not detoxing the hormones properly out of your body. Um, and then you, this could create insulin resistance as well, because of all the stress, it's putting sugar in your blood all the time. Your pancreas is con constantly increasing your insulin levels. We want insulin, we want insulin, we've got to take the sugar out of the blood because sugar can't stay in your blood. It has to go into your cells, it has to go somewhere. And sometimes um, insulin resistance happens because your cells will stop listening to insulin. Uh, insulin says, oh, I, need to get in, I need to get the sugar in, this, in your cells. And over time, like think about it, if someone's knocking at your door 24-7, are you going to stop getting up and answer that door, aren't you? Oh, I'm sick of answering that door. We should stop knocking. I'm not going anymore. I'm not even going to open it. So that's what your cells are saying. I'm not opening this door. Sugar's not coming in. Insulin's not getting in here. And it's going to put its muffles on going, no, 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 I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Um, and all this is going on as well about low progesterone. And then you put perimenopause. In the second phase of perimenopause, you're not always ovulating. So your ovaries are going, oh, we're sitting back and enjoying ourselves. I'm not going to work. No, I'm not going to ovulate this month. There's no progesterone being made, sorry. Um, so, yeah, that, that's going to affect your progesterone levels as well. Um, so, yeah, back to insulin resistance. So, your cells are not going to start opening up and letting sugar in. So, you're going to start feeling tired. I've got no energy at all. I've got no sugar getting into my cells. I've got insulin resistance, too much sugar in my blood. Um... And if this can snowball. Can you see how this can snowball with the high cortisol, the stress, and your body can't burn fat, it can't relax. Your body's constantly on edge. Your body's constantly in that danger mode. It's not resting, repairing, relaxing. You've got not, not enough magnesium to keep your body relaxed and chilled out. Not enough progesterone to balance out the estrogen. The estrogen is like keeping you wired and up. Progesterone is more calming and it helps to balance things out, keeps estrogen under control. It's not there. Um, so I hope that explains. I hope, I, hope you, I hope you're still with me here. You're still with me and you followed all that. Um, how it affects your weight loss and why you can't build muscle. And also when, when I talk about your diet, I work with women all the time to... to work on the diet to make those changes that you do need. And it doesn't take a lot of changes. You probably think, oh, but I've got to, I've got to do that, I've got to do this, and I can't have my alcohol. And, well, just think about it. Do you want to get well? Do you want to have balanced hormones? Do you want to feel better? Do you want to burn fat? Um, I'm not saying you have to completely stop drinking alcohol, stop eating chocolate and everything. But just for a short period of time, maybe for three months, because your hormones can reset in three months, and you just change your diet for a bit, take caffeine out for a bit, take chocolate out for a bit. Let your body calm down, let your body get stressed out, um, de-stress. Um, and then there's toxins to look at as well. Forgot about the toxins. You've got lots of toxins in your life. You know, we, we, we some women put loads of toxins on the skin just in the, in the morning before they go to work. You know, the hair, hair products, makeup, perfume, skin creams, hand creams, lipstick, all everything, makeup, a lot. And that's depending on what you're using and how toxic that is. And then the clothes that you're wearing and what you're eating in your food can be toxic as well. What you're using to cook your food with can be toxic. So you have to look at all these types of things. And this is what I work with women. I work and I look at all these issues. What's happening in your life? What's going on in your body? Is your thyroid not working right? Does that need a little bit of help? Do your adrenal glands a bit tired? Because they, do, they will get better. Your adrenal glands do play up in perimenopause. They will start being stressed out a little bit and wondering what the heck's going on because they're losing the hormones. And then the communication between the brain and your glands will start breaking down because you, you, your brain can't figure out what's going on properly. If you can't keep up with all these hormones going all over the place, it can stress your adrenal glands out a bit and it's important to look after them because they take over making your hormones when your ovaries stop. 
Um, so yeah, if uh, this is why this is what I help you with. You know, this is what's going on. I hope that's explained it to you. Why you can't build muscle as well? You can't be eating the right foods to build muscle because you're losing a bit of muscle and it's harder to, to, to build that muscle. It's harder for women to build muscle anyway, but in perimenopause and menopause, it's harder. So you just have to be smarter with what you're eating, with the type of exercise that you're doing, with, with going with the natural rhythm of your cycle. You know, if you can follow your natural ebb and flow every month of how you're feeling, because you have a different body every week of the month. It's because you women, you, women's hormones are complex, they're up and down, and they're ebbing and flowing different parts of the month. And in menopause, you still have a cycle. So it's important to look at that as well. Um, so if you want any more help from me with, um, with building your muscle, with, with any symptoms that you have, I'm here to help and support you. I've been through the menopause myself. So just study these hormones for the last 10 years, women's hormones. Um, so I can help you out and give you some support there. Set up a call with me. We can have a chat for half an hour. And then I can answer some of your questions, put you a bit more at ease on what's going on with you. And when you're ready, if you want to take more help from me, I'll get more help, help from somebody else. But it's important that you get this, this help. Because your, body, your body's telling you every day, what's going on with your body, what's going on with your health. You just have to pick up, you just have to sit and listen to what your body's telling you. Like, you know, but when you're tired, you need more sleep. You know, when you're hungry, you need to eat food. There's other things going on. If you can just keep a journal, write down what's going on with your body, what symptoms that you have, and then don't just grab a band-aid to put over that. Don't just grab the hormone replacement or the supplement. Because that might not be doing you any good. That might just be making you feel a bit better. But it's not sorting out. Why have the issues in the first place? And this is where I can help, help you with. Finding out what's going on, what's causing these problems. Um, and they can get them sorted out. You know, I can put your mind at ease. I can set you on that road. I can make a plan for you. So you can start getting better, start healing. Because it can be a minefield. There's lots of information on the internet and a lot of it's wrong. A lot of it's, I've, I've come to realize that by studying it for the last 10, 15 years now, I think. I've been studying so much. I'm studying night and day. I'm so passionate about this. Most of my free time, I've spent just studying, working and studying, sacrifice my social life because I want to help other women and empower you to, to create a healthy life for yourself, healthy lifestyle. Be a healthy woman so i hope they found that useful i hope you if you've got any questions at all anything you don't understand just put in the comments below and i'll be around to answer your questions for you so thanks for watching and and i'll see you again take care have a great rest of your day or a great rest of your evening wherever you are in the world um if you're on the replay say hi and um, tell me watch the replay give me a comment or share this with your friends you know the more times that you comment on my videos the more that Facebook will show you my videos. If you want to learn more about your hormones, I'm going to be posting lots of videos all the time. Um, I've also got various challenges um, that you can join um, as well. I've also got a YouTube channel. I post my videos on there as well. You can find all my videos on there if you can't find them in my group or on this page. I post all my videos I do on here on my YouTube channel as well. So you can just go there, find any video that you want. Um, to watch anything you want, uh, any subject. I've, I've covered most subjects about women's hormones. Um, if you want me to do a video, anything that you're not sure about, you want me to do a video about it, then please let me know as well. So thanks for watching. I'll see you again in another video. Bye.